During the Blitz, the Nazis, when they bombed England, it was over a nine month period intensely, but it really technically was over four years. More people have died in Gaza then they died in London during the Blitz. And the Blitz was like carpet bombing, it wasn't precision strikes, so make that of what you will. We have over a hundred genocidal statements from 30 plus Israeli ministers, politicians, and the IDF, proper evil people. For example, take the Israeli heritage minister, Amichai Eliyahu. He said, Israel must find ways for Gazans that are more painful than death. Take Yoav Gallant, Minister of Defense. He said, Hamas lost control of the north of the Strip. We were doing a Gaza Nakba of 2023. For the audience who don't know, the Nakba was the expulsion of over 700,000 Palestinians and the, the massacre and also the destroying of 600 Palestinian villages. He also says, I have ordered a complete siege on the Gaza Strip. There will be no electricity, no food, no fuel. Everything is closed, we are fighting human animals and we are acting accordingly. Benjamin Netanyahu, the Prime Minister, he said, You must remember what Amalek has done to you, says our Bible. And this refers to 1 Samuel 15, 3 that says, Now go, attack the Amalekites and totally destroy all that belongs to them. Do not spare them, put to death men and women, children and infants, cattle and sheep, camels and donkeys. This is pure genocide, genocidal intent here because he's blurring the, the, the boundaries, if you like, between a combatant and a non-combatant and he's saying kill children. Why would the it? Gazans believe the IDF when Why the IDF know? have told them to move and when they've moved they've been bombed? They haven't bombed them. They, they have. Bombed, the aerial yeah. analysis has been shown by independent yeah, they, entities. They bombed the, Hamas no, fighters. No, they have. Well, women, children, they bombed, children. They bombed. Uh, is a child a Hamas fighter? Where, well, is uh, a child a Hamas fighter? Well, if you were saying... Are, are 11,000 children uh, Hamas fighters? Uh, uh, well, hold on. It's we're, genocidal language, we're, we're dehumanizing onto, language. They control even the daily calories. Academics have called right. it perverse, degrading and unlivable in many places. So from that perspective, the way you're framing it, you're framing it as if there are two state actors and there's a war. It's not a war. In, in actual fact, Israel under international law has no right to defend itself. Why? Because it's already in Israel a... Israel has no right to let defend me, me, itself. Yeah, according to international law. Let me explain so why. So after 7th of October, Can I explain Israel why? should do nothing. I'm not saying that. Listen to what well, I'm what saying. What should Israel do then? Listen to, they should stop the apartheid regime. They should stop the illegal settlements. They should stop uh, oppressing the Palestinians. They should stop killing children. They should stop forcing imprisoning children. The list goes on and on and on. That's what they should do. You want peace? Don't be an oppressor. Uh, if you want peace, don't have apartheid. Uh, there are 65 how, how laws are that discriminate against Arab, Israelis and we're, Palestinians. We're on to a new are you top. happy with apartheid? To, Israel dropped an estimated 6,000 bombs in Gaza in less than a week. American US intelligent assessment has said that nearly half of the air to ground munitions that Israel has used in Gaza are dumb bombs, meaning they are not guided. It's just Anything goes, anything can be destroyed. And even President Biden, right? Genocide Joe, he said that Israel has engaged in indiscriminate bombing. And this is supported by scholars, genocide scholars. Let me ask you a question. 7th of October. Why, why, why are you racist? Oh, let, no. let me tell you, no, let me tell you what asking that no, question no, is because let's keep it civil. No, it is civil. I'm not being angry. I'm just be, um, you are a classic atheist. Let me tell you why. Sorry, classic racist. And you're a classic <laughs> atheist as well. Fro Freudian slip. Freudian slip, but he's an atheist are as well. All atheist racist. Of course not. But why are you racist? Because you're talking about October the 6th. Where is your condemnation of the equivalent five October the 7th that were inflicted on the Palestinians from 2008 to 2020? Where is your condemnation of that? You talk about October the 6th as if everything was rosy and peaceful. Israel has an apartheid system around 65 laws, no less than 65 laws that discriminate against Arab Israelis and the Palestinians. You have illegal occupation. Where is your condemnation of the equivalent of 5 October the 7th since 2008? Where is your condemnation? Why the more asymmetry? Is it because you're racist? Do you believe Israeli blood is more wor is worth more than Palestinian blood? Because you're not even bothered to address that reality. There are five equivalent October the 7th inflicted on the Palestinians before October the 7th. The kind of othering that is happening in your language and also the subtlety between war against Israel, now war against the Jews. Jews is these subtleties, these kind of propaganda techniques, which are quite, in fact, quite devilish. I know you're an atheist, so don't take it personally because you don't believe in the devil. But the point is, it's a devilish ploy because it is well known that the Palestinians, Muslims as well in general, 
have never wanted to fight the Jews. In actual fact, Islam preserved the Jewish community. Philip Mansell's book, Constantinople, has a primary source of a Jewish rabbi that was expelled from Spain because of the Inquisition. He said, come to the land of the Turks, rich are the fruits of the earth, we live in peace and freedom. Amnon Cohen, a Jewish historian, he's got a book called World Within. It's a two volume book. He collects 1000 records of the judicial records, the sigil records. And he concludes that although the Jews had the freedom to go to the rabbinical courts, the majority of them or a substantial number of them wanted to go to the Qadi, the Islamic judge, because the new justice lived under the Islamic principles. He even goes to the Manushai and he says women would complain of nafaqa, meaning maintenance uh, from their husband to the Islamic judge. And I could go on and on and on. Zion Zohar, you could talk about jihad. True jihad is liberation of people. Zion Zohar, another Jewish historian, he talks about the Iberian Peninsula. He says, thus, when the Muslims crossed the Straits of Gibraltar in the Iberian Pen Peninsula, the Jews saw the Muslims as liberators from Christian persecution. And if you look at the treaty of the Prophet Muhammad upon him, peace himself, he had a treaty with the Jews, with the Jewish tribes, and he said they should not be harmed and they act as one body. This is unprecedented in history. We're not fighting the Jews were fighting Zionism. Our job is to take care of all human beings, to give them dignity, and that's extremely important. Karen Armstrong says something very interesting. She's a popular historian. She says the Muslims create a system of governance where Muslims, Jews, and Christians live peacefully for the first time. If you want to look at this from a historical perspective, there's actually no other time in history where Jews, Christians, and Muslims live peacefully other than under the Islamic civilization.